Good morning, Atchison, where the river runs dirty and the gas clouds float. Good times and great weather are in the air today at the first annual Epilepsy Awareness Ironman, taking place right here on Commercial Street. Now, a lot of you might be asking yourselves, Epipepsi? Eplicipi? Mississippi? What's that? Some kind of new soda? Nope, it's actually a recurrent seizure disorder. And to help us understand more about what this means, we have with us a panel of epilepsy experts. Here to explain the pathophysiology of this disorder is the Benedictine College Nursing Department Professor, Ms. Wendy Woolston. Ms. Wendy Woolston, welcome Thank to the you. show. Thank you for having me. You're it's welcome. great to be here. Awesome. So epilepsy is a disorder of neurons in the brain firing spontaneously and it's characterized by recurrent seizures. A seizure happens when a neuron becomes excited and leads to the synchronization of other neurons. So when one neuron becomes excited, the surrounding neurons become excited. Then you have a large group of impulses going off in a certain part of the brain. So this leads to many neurons firing randomly in other parts of the brain, resulting in a seizure. With epilepsy, people experience epileptic seizures. Now what makes a seizure epileptic is when it occurs in epileptic tissue. How tissue becomes epileptic is not completely understood, but it is known that normal networks of neurons change in some way to become networks of hyperexcitable neurons. Well, thanks for all the knowledge, Ms. Wendy Wilson. And well, there you have it, folks. We now know about the pathophysiology of this disease and what it's all about. Let's return to the race. And this just in, the bikers have begun. Looks like Jocelyn Kleinsmith is in the lead. Wait, oh no. Hello? Yep. All right, thank you. This just in, the all-American Ironman racer, Jocelyn Kleinsmith, has been lost. She is off course, and we don't know where. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, are you okay? I don't believe it. Welcome to the show, Jocelyn Kleinsmith. Thanks, thanks, David. You know, I needed a water break anyhow. <sighs> this right. is perfect, really. You know, I am obsessed about epilepsy. Do you know the causes of epilepsy? No, Let I can't me say. tell you. So, you know, it happens that about 50% of those with epilepsy don't actually know the cause. But it can often be due to something genetic. Um, there could be structural brain changes, autism spectrum disorder, brain infections, head injuries, strokes, Alzheimer's. There's lots of different causes. Some risk factors. Do you know the risk factors? Let me tell you. Some of those include babies that are small for their age, brain bleeding or tumors, strokes, cerebral palsy, a family history, use of illegal drugs like cocaine, that type of stuff. You know, but usually they just don't even know. Wow. All right. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you got a race to get yeah, back. Yeah, I got to get back, but okay. this thing, I got to Sounds good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you, you keep drinking water. Okay. Bye, thanks, David. Yeah, thanks, Jocelyn. Woo! Wish you all the best. Now joining me is BSN RN, PhD, med surge certified, mother of 15, also running for general surgeon of the United States, and only 28 years old, is Dr. Abigail Merck. Dr. Abigail Merck, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, David. You're welcome. Me. Yes. Excited. I'm glad you're here. All right, so what I'd like to talk about is the classic manifestations that you see with seizures because, as we know, thanks to Mrs. Wollston, that epilepsy is a disorder of reoccurring seizures. Now, when you think of a seizure, you may think of some of the common symptoms like muscle spasms or loss of consciousness. However, there are also many different types of seizures, and everyone exhibits them in a different way. The two main types that I'd like to talk about are focal and generalized seizures. Focal or also a partial seizure um, only affects one area of the brain, and this is, makes up about 60% of those with epilepsy. There are two types of focal seizures, a simple and a complex. During a simple focal seizure, the person remains conscious and experiences unusual feelings or sensations. During a complex focal seizure, the person has a change or loss of consciousness and enters a dreamlike state. And you will often see repetitious behaviors like twitching or walking in circles. Generalized seizures have multiple origins in the brain and cause a loss of awareness or, con or a loss of consciousness. 
The manifestations of these seizures can range from the person staring off into the distance, almost zoning out, to the person's um, having muscle stiffness, muscle twitches, large jerking motions um, of the upper and lower extremities. So with these seizures, it is also common to have something called an aura, which is a precursor to the seizure. Auras are these unusual sensations, um, like smelling something unusual or experiencing visual changes um, that occur before the seizure is about to begin and act as almost a warning sign to the um, upcoming seizure. Wow. Thanks so much, Dr. Merck. Yeah. I'm really glad that we finally get to know more about what these seizures actually look like and what's Anytime. going on. Thank wow. you, David. Thank you. Stay tuned for more epilepsy information right after this short commercial break. Are you experiencing muscle spasms and seizures that cannot be controlled? We have the medication for you. Valium. Valium relieves muscle spasms and works by calming the brain and nerve. Take as directed by your doctor. Sudden discontinuation of medication can cause withdrawal symptoms such as shaking, abdominal cramps, sweating, vomiting, restlessness, anxiety, and seizures. Side effects of this medication include dizziness, drowsiness, tiredness, blurred vision, or unsteadiness. If these symptoms last or get worse, notify your healthcare provider immediately. Choose Valium. Welcome back to Atchison Daily News. Ella Seif, winner of the Ironman, has just agreed to come in and discuss her race experience with us. Congratulations, Ella. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I just ran so fast and biked so hard and swam my little heart out, all for my little boy who suffers from epilepsy himself. I just can't- Wait a second. Did you just say you have a son? With epilepsy? Yeah. Can I have his phone number? Uh, sure. But why do you... William? Yeah. Hey, are you there? Hey, uh, yeah, could you please tell us about how uh, epilepsy has changed your lifestyle? Alright, I'm going to put you on speaker. Is that okay? Awesome. How epilepsy has changed my lifestyle? Um, I think in a lot of ways I consider myself really fortunate um, when it comes to you know my condition with epilepsy. I think I have extremely mild epilepsy. You know, you read online when you first hear epilepsy. I think people think you know at any given moment he's around a strobe light, he could have a seizure. You know, that's not really how it works for me. Um, I know there are people that have like sometimes up to like 20 seizures a day and I can Im even imagine something like that but I I'm very fortunate I do take uh, medication for my epilepsy um, I take Keppra um, which is a very common epilepsy drug um, which helps to prevent seizures um, but really when it comes to the epilepsy itself to seizures you know in my for as long as I've had it, it's only been like one to two seizures a year. So, you know, never anything very serious. Um, so I think I'm really fortunate in saying that it hasn't changed my lifestyle very much. Um, the most recent seizure I had was January of 2017 of this year. And um, after that, um, that was my first seizure, second seizure, pardon, that I had um, while I had my driver's license. And because of that, I had my license revoked for six months. That's probably the biggest toll that my epilepsy has really taken on me. Um, it gets frustrating, you know. It it really gets in the way. Um, but I mean, like I said, it's really not very serious for me. I can't complain, you know, when you read some of the stories and what is, you know, probably discussed when you hear the word epilepsy and stuff like that. I really have it pretty nice. Um, I take pills in the morning, pills before I go to bed. Um, if I forget to take my medication for long enough, that could cause a problem, but that's just, you know, my memory. I just have to stay committed to 
taking pills. It's my laziness that could cause me to have a seizure more than anything else. Um, so, how has epilepsy changed my lifestyle? Um, I think, very fortunately, not very much. Wow, William, thank you so much for telling us about your lifestyle and how it's changed since you've had epilepsy. Well, thanks, Ella. You have a great day. Thank you. And that's all for today, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a great weekend.